I'm Daniel Martin and I'm the curator of making for Derby Museums here at the site of the world's first factory, Derby Silk Mill. Now the room we're currently standing in is our main store and this may not be what you expected from a store but actually it's not uncommon for museums to have as much as 95% of their collections actually hidden behind closed doors in storage. Now we think that's a bit of a missed opportunity because that would be 95% of all of the stories not being collected, all of those narratives not being shared, all of that meaning that these collections have in them not being shared with the wider public and with people who visit Derby to really understand what the city's about as a city of makers. Now, in order for us to put 100% of these collections on display, which is ultimately what we want to do in the Museum of Making, that means that all of these collections, everything you can see in this room, needs to be catalogued, it needs to be packed, and it needs to be taken out to temporary storage. Now that's a huge task, and though it doesn't look like we've got very far, that's because we haven't really got started in this store yet. But there are some amazing objects here for you to see. Now, over on the back wall, on those shelves, looking like lots of tatty bits of wood, that's actually Derby's first ever tram. An amazing survivor from the late 19th century, but the sort of object a lot of people in the city may not even know that we had, or even know that Derby ever had trams. Equally, here, you can see that we have the Qualcast collection. Now, most people will be familiar with the name Qualcast as a brand of lawnmowers. Well, this is the city where it started life, as quality castings. And just imagine how many people have mowed lawns and have great stories about their lawnmowers, which sounds a little bit odd, but you'd be amazed how many people love their lawnmowers. All of these collections have those sorts of stories within them. So as I say, we need to actually pack these collections up and get them ready for decamp. So if you'd like to join me in our other store upstairs, I can show you where we've got to with that project. So welcome to store two. And as you can see, there's more order and organisation in this room. And that's because we've actually finished cataloguing in this room. Now, on my left, you can see a wall of boxes that are properly organised and ordered. You'll also be able to see some different coloured labels on these boxes. Firstly, to the yellow label, this tells us the box number, the object number, and the name of the object or any extra information we might need when we handle this object. The green label, that tells us that this object is good to go. It's ready to be decanted without any further work being done. The red label gives us a warning information. So that may be that the object contained within is fragile, could be that that object is heavy, or perhaps that some part of that object is protruding from the box and therefore is in danger of being broken. Now, the reason we have these warning labels is twofold. Firstly, to protect the people who are going to be moving these collections to temporary storage. Now, that's going to be us, the Derby Museum staff, but also our wonderful co-producers, which will hopefully include you in the future. The second reason is because we need to protect the objects that are in here, because it's these fabulous objects that people are going to draw those stories from. Now, our catalogue tells us that we have about 50,000 objects in the collection, but we think this might grossly underrepresent how many objects we actually have. Now, the hope is that by 2020, by putting 100% of these collections on display, that there will be tens of thousands of objects for you to come down and hear other people's stories that have been shared, to share your own stories about these objects, but also to have a little go at some of the making that might be inspired by these wonderful and varied collections.